What's up, YouTube? ODST General back again with another Operation Trebuchet news update. Uh, so this one's not too long after the last update. However, I do really want to try and uh, be a little bit better this time around. Uh, not wait so long to get this up. There's still a lot to talk about, but uh, try to avoid a half an hour video here. So let's jump into it. Uh, let's start off with real big news. Uh, the dog, the main developer, the lead developer, I guess you should say, for uh, Operation Trebuchet has been deployed. Um, I talked about this some in my last video. Now, what does this mean for the mod? There had been some concern that with all the stuff he was working on that it, we might just have to wait to see it released. Uh, well, they, uh, they shed some further light on this and uh, the dog has shifted his uh, projects over to other developers to finalize that. Um, he was working on the Arctic clothing, the new buildings, and the uh, like the vests and uniforms and stuff for the Marines for the new armor. So uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of big stuff for this update that's uh, rework-wise and uh, new things that he was working on. Uh, that's really all I have to say about the dog other than uh, good luck, sir. I know you won't see this video now, but uh, we wish you the best of luck over there. Uh so let's continue going on with the rest of the development team. Next up is Zephyr Souza. So Zephyr has been the one who's uh, taking on uh, Dog's armor pre-work. Uh, it sounds like she's getting ready to rig the armor. Uh, bear in mind, she is also working on her own projects, which are the uh, the new URF armor, the uh, battle jumper armor, and uh, you know a couple other things that she's got going on. It looks like she's finishing up the Noble Six armor. So she's got a few different things that she's got going here right now. Um, so right now she's, uh, she is also talking about reworking the bison. So she says if she does redo the bison, cause she's not completely satisfied with how it turned out, uh, that will come after all of her other projects. So that is once again, those things I just mentioned to so the armors and the, uh, the noble six armor and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I've got a little bit to show off there, but that's really just, uh, just the noble six armor, I guess which is uh, that last thing I mentioned here. So that's actually an in-game picture that we've got of it. Uh, as you guys can see, like I said last time, it's got those modified shoulder pads, not the standard default uh, shoulder pads or lack thereof for Noble Six. Um, so it looks a lot better in-game now that the uh, shoulders are actually placed in the proper spot for the uh, model. Uh, they look a lot better in there for sure. Uh, so I'm not sure how long until we'll actually see that in Optray Z. Or if we will see that in Optrazy, or if we'll just have to wait for uh, the main mod to push that through. So let's uh, let's continue on. Uh, up next, let's talk about Jedi Nick. So I'm Jedi Nick, a member of the mod team and also a member of the 17th ODST. Uh, he's had a number of projects he's worked on for the mod so far, but right now his main goal is, uh, in addition to the plasma coils I showed off last time, uh, to add in uh, some new versions of stuff he's already released. Uh, currently, he is reworking some binoculars he's done in the past to make them look a little bit better, look a little bit more realistic with the materials and stuff. Um, so that's probably something he's working on, along with Zero, part of that thing to make all the uh, weapons and materials and stuff look a little bit more in line and to try and make them look consistent throughout the mod. Uh, not much else to talk about there, though, unfortunately, so let's go ahead and keep moving to HK Urban. Uh, HK is a uh, viewer of the channel here. He's been part of the mod team for a long time, and we've talked about a lot of his previous work. Um, so I just got done talking with the uh, creator of the current M247, Shadow, uh, over, you know, my previous video, and he just corrected me on a couple things or updated me on the status of a few things that I had kind of talked about that we didn't really know where they sat because they haven't been talked about too much recently. Uh, he told me that HK will be doing a new M247 for the mod, uh, and that that will in all likelihood replace the current variation in there. Uh, and that he will be taking the lead on uh, development of attachments for it. So we've already talked about the uh, the mounts for it, for like the static mounts with the shield and the tripod and stuff. Um, he'll also be taking over the pelican mounting stuff for it. So the pelican mounts that I showed you guys last time were Shadow's work. Um, so we won't be seeing those uh, in place. It looks like we'll be seeing new ones. So once again, that'll probably be uh, in line with the development team's current um, ideology which is trying to make everything kind of consistent throughout as far as the quality and the materials and stuff of the weapons 
we'll have to wait for more information. I did ask uh, Shadow in regards to the fate of the M247, and unfortunately he said that that probably will not be shifted over to Optre CC. That's not part of their plan, at least. Um, that might change later on, but currently that's a, that's a no he gave me. Um, so in addition to that, uh, HK Urban's also now working on adding the binocular helmets for ODSTs. Now you may say, wait, this is already in, but as you can see by the picture I've just posted, uh, he's working on both an ODST and a Marine variant, which currently does not exist. And, uh, in addition to that, we will both have like the current version, but we'll also have it. So it actually slides down into place. Now I'm not exactly sure how this will work. If it'll be maybe like a, uh, night vision goggle attachment that you get or how this will work, but it should, I guess, slide into place just over the eyes like you'd expect it to, which is pretty neat. You never really get to see it used in that way. So, uh, a nice little addition. And I like the way the Marine helmet looks with it. It looks pretty neat. So, uh, looking forward to those being added in here. Uh, so let's get back to Optre CC. I did just mention that a little bit ago. As I mentioned, the M247 probably won't see a, any sort of release in there. That, like I said, was a no from what I was told. Of course, just like anything else with these news uh, articles, whatever you want to call them, videos... Uh, anything I say in here is prone to change or uh, incorrect information, but that's coming directly from Shadow, the creator of it. So we'll see maybe once that happens, though, once the other one's uh, removed, if that ends up being its fate. Um, I did find out more information on the MA5K-A2. I got it right this time. <laughs> and the... Uh, the Kodiak and the Cricket and stuff, so let's go ahead and talk about those. So first up, the ME5K-A2, the first project of Optre CC, uh, has been pretty much near completion for a pretty long, solid while. Um, I just found out that uh, Dan, who is one of the, uh, the bigger developers over there, has been uh, missing for a while here, so Config has been handed over to Fletcher, also a member of the 17th ODST, and a uh, independent modder for Optre. Uh, he's got his own weapons mod, well, modification of Optre weapons, I should say, mod. So uh, he's taking over config of the uh, of the MA5K-A2, so hopefully we'll be seeing that uh, sooner rather than later now. I know Fletcher's uh, gotten a pretty good amount of practice modifying weapons and setting all that stuff up with his own work in his mod, so hopefully we'll see that pretty soon. Uh, then there's the Kodiak. I've shown that off here just recently, too. Uh, that one's getting some uh, texture tweaks, too. I'm not sure exactly what kind of tweaks it's going to be getting. Uh, probably still a long ways out before we see it, but, uh, you know, once again, we'll see ultimately when that comes in. I don't have any images of that for you guys, unfortunately. Uh, and then ultimately, or lastly for uh, Optre CC, I should say, is the Cricket. So, as it turns out, the Cricket is actually completed. It is in-game. Uh, and that while it's not officially been released, it has seen some action in a uh, op for the 17th, from what I've been told. Uh, unfortunately, due to uh, some mouse issues and stuff and a few other things with just being busy, I haven't had too much uh, opportunity to attend unit events and stuff like that. So I missed that one, so I do apologize for you guys. Otherwise, I might have some video of it in action. Um, I might try, if I have time here before release, to uh, hit a couple people up and see if maybe that video exists somewhere and uh, annex it from its creator. Uh, we'll see what happens with that, though. Uh, continuing on with side mods, though, we have UNSC Extended Arsenal. That is uh, Tim's mod. So uh, Tim has done a lot of work for uh, op or UNSC Extended Arsenal. I almost said Optre CC again. He's done a lot of work for this since the last uh, video. A lot of things have changed and been added, so let's get into it. Uh, so he's added the uh, proper RV mats or better RV mats for his models, improving the appearance of material and game. Uh, Aircraft windshields are now clear, so you can actually see through the windshields. They're not just like a solid black or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty awesome stuff. They do look a lot better. You know, this applies to the weapons and the armor and stuff, too. So, uh, there's a lot of different changes that have been made with that. Uh, it's definitely nice. Probably still need some texture work and stuff like that, but uh, it is a big addition, and I think they'll make it a little bit uh, better looking for people who have been wanting to use the assets. So they'll be a to uh, probably stand a little bit better if they couldn't before. Uh, he's also added the Sparrow Hawking game. So the Sparrow Hawk is, of course, the uh, helicopter like unit. It's kind of like a uh, Hornet a little bit. It's from Halo Wars. Uh, 
it's uh, it's in game. It's working. It's got rockets and it's got machine guns. It did seem a little bit buggy. It kind of to likes to pop up when you're taking off. So there is a small chance you can crash during takeoff. Um, I haven't really played around with it since this last most recent update Tim did. So he might have patched some of that out to repair that too. Um, I just know that was like the second update after it came out. It was still doing that. Um, that update also broke the albatross. So the albatross wouldn't show up in game. Like you could select it, but it wouldn't actually spawn in or anything. Uh, the albatross has been fixed and is back in game in working order once again. And, uh, this was more of a sneak edition. I wouldn't have known this except for another community member mentioned it. Uh, apparently Tim added the vulture into the mod. Now, the reason I didn't catch this was because it was added in and it's only available through virtual arsenal, which is something I don't actually get into a whole lot. So that was, uh, that was something kind of sneaky. I didn't see. Um, so it is actually in working order. Um, I haven't checked it out with this most recent update, but I will obviously do so to get the video footage for this. Um, but from my last playthrough, it is pretty crazy vehicle. Uh, it's basically, it's got a ton of recoil when you fire the main cannons and those main cannons are big. Uh, I don't know what sort of future plans Tim has for it as far as like landing gear and stuff like that. It does seem quite large, but it's hard to judge the size uh, relative to anything else. I feel like it's still probably a little bit smaller than it should be. So I guess we'll wait and see once that's actually further in game. And I'll have to actually try and see if I can better compare it to the other vehicles to get a better idea of its size. Um, Tim has actually been working on a few other things though. Like I said, he's done a lot since this last video. Uh, in the most recent update, the one I've mentioned a couple times now, he's added the Halo 2 ODST vest. Um, it's a little bit different than the, uh, the Halo 2 anniversary or the original one, but that's okay. It's still really good looking. Um, you know, I've always, obviously my name's ODST General, I'm a f you know, I have a fondness for ODSTs and, uh, you know, of course that started with the Halo 2 ODST. So part of me has been waiting a long time to see this Halo 2 Marine armor added in or not Marine armor, but ODST armor. Um, I do believe that there was a uh, model being worked on by Burgess, I want to say, at one point in time before all the stuff happened with Opcan, and I don't know if it's still a work in progress for him or if that or, uh, model no longer exists, but uh, Tim has one in now. Um, in addition to that, he also added in the uh, concept backpack from the Halo 3 ODST art. Um, the in-game model does look a little bit different than the, uh, the concept art does, and it sits a little bit higher than the concept art does, but uh, it's a pretty neat addition. You know, it's definitely a very sci-fi looking backpack it's definitely fits well with the op tray assets and it's uh you know it's one of those things i think a lot of people have been wanting is just more flavor for the backpacks because really the only uh like actual sci-fi backpacks that are currently in so far are the uh the odst backpacks from the halo 3 odst like in-game stuff um, I know a lot of other backpacks are being made for the Marines. Uh, both Opcan and the main mod were working on backpacks to add. So uh, this is still a nice addition, though. And like I said, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be using this. Uh, and then there is one last thing Tim has been working on, and that is a boat. Um, now, I talked a little bit about the carrier that uh, Burgess had been working on for Opcan. And, uh, you know, obviously, like I said, that's ultimate fate is unknown to me and... Uh, you know, I haven't been told anything further since that last video, but uh, seeing wet Navy assets in this is uh, always pretty exciting. You know, water is a big part in Armour, and uh, it doesn't necessarily get utilized as well as it should sometimes, but, you know, there's a lot of beach landings and water patrols and stuff people do, and, uh, you know, I still see those in the Halo mods. It's just that usually everybody's stuck using, like, ribs and stuff like that, so having an actual, like, Halo-designed boat is really awesome and even though this is based off concept art uh it's still something very exciting to see but let's go ahead and uh, let's keep going let's uh, talk about opcan uh burgess has released his first map uh it is part of uh, something called opcan terrains so i assume there's going to be more after this uh the first train is reverence island on harvest um, it won't be super massive farming. There's definitely going to be a farming section and uh, orbital elevator according to Burgess's plans for this map ultimately. Um, 
this initial release is publicly available, but it is just uh, the terrain itself. There is no buildings or anything on it, so don't go in there expecting this whole super developed map quite yet, but it is going to give you guys a basic idea of where the terrain's going to go. Um, it's a little bit very <laughs> more so than my own terrain, so it's pretty good looking already. Um, that Independent Covenant mod, that's... Uh, you know, we've kind of talked about them. Still not a lot I know about them, unfortunately. They uh, they did kind of talk a little bit more about some of the stuff they're working on. That is uh, Emperor Duet and his, uh, his two other companions. Uh, they showed off some work that they were doing. Uh, that was a plasma pistol, a plasma rifle, and a plasma repeater. Um, the, the main developers for Optray, you know, they did kind of question the origin of the weapons over concerns that they hate. They were uh, ripped assets. They may or may not be. Emperor Duet said he has seen the development of the plasma rifle over time. It's not an asset he is working on, but he said he's seen that the guy who is working on it is actually creating these from scratch. Uh, he did say that in regards to the plasma pistol and the plasma repeater, he could not confirm their actual origin. Uh, so I guess ultimately, just like a lot of other things in this update, we're going to have to wait and see once those come out. Uh, we'll be able to tell a lot better once they're in game, whether or not those are actually like ripped assets, once they're actually in our own hands, if they do make it that far. Um, you know, obviously they, there's a lot of ripped assets out in the armor community right now with Star Wars opposition and, uh, Mass Effect opposition. And a lot of community members don't really mind that. I mean, because it's it's more assets, it's stuff that they love and they want to get their hands on, which I can understand. And, uh, you know, as a player who wants to see that stuff, I actually feel a lot the uh, the same way. But at the same time, as a creator, I definitely understand the frustration in having somebody else take your work and then uh, go and use it however they want without uh, asking or anything. So we'll have to ultimately wait and see uh, in regards to that. Uh, anyways, let's continue on. Uh, Luca slash BF2 Freak, as he's also known in the community, is uh, working on new terrain. Uh, you guys might know his work as he's done a whole bunch of missions for Operation Trebuchet. He's got the Insurrection Plus mod under his belt. Uh, he's got those Tanoa ops. Uh, he's gotten uh, various other missions from the community, so he's a longtime community member. Uh, he just did his uh, Elodin terrain which is actually quite popular right now uh it's a sci-fi desert terrain it requires optre assets in it but um it's actually based off of mass effect but anyways he's working on a new terrain a snow environment uh so he's got a couple images he released of this today uh i don't know when we can expect to see this his last terrain came out really quick um he hit me up for a couple of tips or uh, questions where he was having some issues but you know it did not take him that long at all to get that terrain out so he definitely learned a lot faster than i did and uh you know i suspect that this one will come out even quicker than that now that he's got an idea of what he's already doing uh, and then I think the last thing, yeah, last thing we've got to talk about is Morthon and his brutes. We're coming up on about 20 minutes here, so a little bit shorter, but still a bit longer than I wanted. Um, Morthon continues development of his brutes. Uh, he's gotten them in game now once again. Uh, he is still working on animations and various other aspects of them, but, uh, they're definitely seeing a lot of adjustments. Uh, he's working on new materials for the helmets and stuff so that he can, uh, better reuse these materials for any possible future covenant so that there's uh, kind of a consistent look between them. So say if he creates an elite armor, uh, the elites have very similar looking armor to the brutes, you know, obviously the, the design will look a lot different, but the materials themselves will look very similar. Um, not a lot more to say about the brutes that hasn't already been said, but they do sure look menacing. Uh, probably one of the most interesting pictures to me, there's two, is the uh, the first one's the first person point of view of a brute looking down on an insurrection soldier. Uh, that gives you an idea of the size of these things. So that's actually where you'll be looking as a player down on Marines. So you have to like look down on somebody you're next to. Uh, I'm kind of curious how that will affect gameplay because obviously there's not a whole lot of games where you're like, you know, three or four feet taller than the, the guy you're looking at. <laughs> but uh, it should be interesting to be sure, um, especially in something more realistic like Arma. Uh, and then the other interesting one is he started work on Elites. 
Uh, he said that he may or may not actually try to add the elites in game, and I would imagine that's probably going to be kind of dependent on Optre first contact and what their elites turn out to look like and actually get in game. Uh, obviously, if those ones do get put into game, they won't actually be custom elites like Morthon's doing for the Brutes. They are just skins for uh, people. So we may or may not ultimately see them added in game, and if they do, they he may or may not still work on uh, replacing that. But uh, what's really fun is seeing this picture. He's got his uh, Halo Three Marine armor uh, stacked up right next to the uh, to the brute and to the elite, and you can see how big the brute is compared to the uh, to the marine. The elite is a little bit smaller than the brute, but it's still quite large compared to the marine. So. Uh, it would be really fun to see these in game here and just see these different uh, Covenant aliens going at it. Uh, I am slowly trying to win him over on the thought of a hunter. Uh, he he said he thinks the idea is cool, and I know he's going to watch this video at some point here. So once again, Morthon, dude, the hunter, do it. But uh, no, seriously though, it's been awesome work, and uh, you know a lot of stuff going on in the community right now, just like always. Uh, so I'm really excited to see where all this stuff goes and uh, see its ultimate release. Anyways, guys, let me know, once again, what's your favorite thing? Uh, what did I screw up in the video? Let me know all that stuff in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.